I previously published a video where I used PVC pipe to make a fender for my Jetson Bolt Pro. I finally found Kydex in the proper size to attempt a second go at this. In this clip, I'm using a scrap piece of Kydex to test its pliability when heated and pressed into shape over a mold. The test was promising, so I'm looking forward to making a new Kydex fender next. What you see here is the test fender I made using a small scrap piece of Kydex I had around the workshop. If this is the first time you're seeing my DIY fender, you might think it looks pretty ragged. If that's the case, you need to see my version 1 fender made from PVC. Once you see that one, you'll understand why I'm pretty happy with the results of using Kydex. A huge benefit with this version 2 fender is that it's so much easier to fabricate. Heating it up and folding it over the test mold didn't take very long and the end result is an extremely durable fender that also weighs probably half the weight of the PVC version. As you saw in the opening clip, I used a tire for a mold because all I was testing was how well Kydex formed when it's folded over a cylindrical arch. The edges of the Kydex fender still had some overlapping issues, but in my view it was not that much as long as the fender will stop water from spraying upwards when I'm riding in the rain. The Kydex sheets I purchased are 12 inch by 24 inch. I'm cutting them into about 4 inch wide strips, slightly less because of the width of my table saw blade. The strips are narrower than my previous fender, but they should be wide enough to block the water spraying off the tire. I'm drilling holes along the center line of the length of the Kydex, which I'll use to anchor the Kydex during the shaping of the fender. I won't cover the holes once the fender is done because I don't think much water will get through them. The first bend I'm going to do is an easy one. I'm bending the length around the circumference of the tire that I'm using as a mold. The holes I drilled earlier can now be used to pass zip ties through to anchor the kydex to the mold. I'll use a propane torch to soften the kydex to a point where it becomes very pliable. It can get about the consistency of a rubber tire, at which point it's very easy to press fit it around the mold. Some of the edges will fold over on each other, pretty much like a rubber tire would. In the case of an edge that folds over on itself, you can heat up a small area around the fold, pull the fold out to unfold it, then swipe the area downward and into the mold to flatten it out. This will work most of the time if the fold isn't too large. This is my completed Kydex fender. The edges are a bit wrinkled along the circumference of the fender, but I'm okay with that. It's still a lot better than my PVC fender from early 2023. At this point, I can cut the zip ties, remove the fender from the mold, and pull the zip ties out from the fender. I feel the fender looks great, but if I wanted to clean up the edges, I could probably remove about a half inch from each side to remove the worst of the wrinkles. For the mounting bracket that holds the fender to the Jetson, I'm using copper tubing and copper lug connectors. Here's the basic configuration I plan to use for the copper pieces. The lug connectors will be soldered to the copper tube. One end will bolt to the fender and the other will bolt somewhere on the bicycle. I'll start by drilling out the copper tube to fit the small lug connector into the tube. This process took some time because it's hard to hold the tube and drill into it. I kept drilling a little at a time and eventually I drilled the tube deep enough to fit the small lug connector. What you're seeing in this clip was when I was practically done with the drilling. The small lug connector was still a little too snug when fitted into the copper tube, so I took some 120 grit wet dry sandpaper and sanded around the section that would have to fit into the tube. The portion of the lug connector that needs the most attention when sanding is the edge. The edge tends to flare outward slightly, which would cause it to get stuck as soon as it's inserted into the tube. This is how the small lug connector will fit into the tube. The fit is snug, similar to how plumbing pipes fit into joints, but it should not be stuck to where you can't pull the lug connector out. It should be removable with a little effort. 
For comparison, this is the large lug connector that will be soldered to the other end of the tube once I know what length to cut the tube to. Where the small lug connector is joined to the copper tube inside of it, the large lug connector instead will fit over the copper tube. This was not planned. I bought the pieces I thought I would need and it just so happened that this is how everything fit together. Luckily, they all fit. To solder the connector to the tube, I'll put some flux on both surfaces to be joined. In this case, I'll scoop a bunch onto the connector and that should coat the tube when I fit them together. I'll then heat up the area where I want the solder to flow, tap the solder onto the joint a few times and that should add more than enough solder to the area. I'll scrub off the hardened flux from the joint and also scrub away some of the tarnish from the heat to get back to the copper color. One thing I have to do before mounting the fender is bend it so it's slightly larger than the tire. I shaped this fender using a stock tire as the mold, so the fender is currently the same diameter as the tire. Bending it slightly larger will create an even gap between the fender and the tire, the same as a typical fender. A second thing I have to do is cut the fender to length. I shaped the fender using a 2 foot long length of Kydex, knowing that I'd later have to cut the ends of the fender off to get the size I want. In this clip, I'm showing with my hand about where I might cut the ends off. The last thing I need to do is round the pointed corners of the fender. This is more for looks, but I'm kinda used to having fenders with rounded ends. Rather than mount this fender the traditional way, using an L bracket, I decided to make things simple and use a zip tie. The zip tie is rated for 50 pounds and the fender weighs almost nothing, so I'm sure I won't have problems with the zip tie holding the fender in place. I'm drilling a hole in the fender to bolt one end of the copper support tube to it. With that end bolted in place, it helps me figure out where the other side of the tube must be cut. I've done a dry fit and marked off where the copper tube should be cut. This pipe cutter can cut pipe from 1 8 inch to 1 inch by clamping the blade onto the pipe and rotating the cutter around the pipe circumference. Because my pipe is so small to handle, I'm rotating the pipe instead. In the process of dry fitting the copper tube onto the fender, I realized I should skip using bolts altogether and use zip ties to secure the copper support in place. The fender might still move a little, but I think it'll be okay. Worst case, I'll have to resort to nuts and bolts. I'm happy with how this fender turned out. It's a little rough around the edges, literally, but it has a rustic look that goes well with the look of my Bolt Pro. On top of that, it's an extremely durable fender. I still need to make a rear fender, but the fabrication process will be the same as the front one, so that should be easier now that I've already completed one. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section down below. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.